Hey, good afternoon, everyone. It's Wendy K. Laidlaw here from Heal Endometriosis Naturally. Now, I always say I enjoy introducing my guests, but my greatest, my greatest joy, my greatest guests are always my former students who have been through my foundation program and advanced program. And it's with great joy and delight that I introduce Julie Cassidy today from America. Hey, Julie. Hello. Hi, Wendy. So fantastic to have you here. And for those who are listening and watching, this is a real moment of celebration for Julie. She has come so far and come such a long way. And I know it's an emotional, you know, uh, time to be sharing in this because what you don't know is, you know, Julie's had to overcome so much to get to the point where she can actually be here and speak and be proud of, of her accomplishments because she had so much to overcome getting here. But anyway, you're going to hear all about Julie's story in her own words shortly. <laughs> but Julie, thank you so much for coming and taking the time to share your story today. Well, thank you for having me and thank you for being the best guidance and blessing of a gift to find you in your program. Oh. It's totally changed my life. No, I'm well, I'm honestly, so, thank you. That's so sweet of you to say. I think it always when people are listening to this, because you yourself, you'd heard some uh, video testimonials and, and some other women who'd come through the program. But I think it'd be lovely for other women to hear what was your story? Like, you know, where, what were you like before you joined the program? And then what led you to reach out to me on the foundation program? Okay, um, about three and a half years ago, I got, uh, four years ago, I had got my broker license and a new job, and I had got the Morena IUD um, to help me so I wouldn't miss work, and about eight months in, I started to feel really off. My um, moods, I would have memory loss, my hair started to fall out, I had some personal, you know, problem. I had cystic acne, like horrifically. Um, the mood swings, and I just felt off. And I went to the doctors. They said it's not the IUD, and progressively it got worse. More of my hair was falling out. I was actually like blacking out, like, and then I was starting to become, which I found out later was hypervigilance. Um, and I said, please take it out. And the doctor that put it in, he wouldn't do it. He actually did the surgery. He, I, he wouldn't even let me talk during the surgery and my instinct. I should have gone with it, but they took it out. And when they took it out, I bled 55 days heavily to the point where I thought I was going to need a blood transfusion. And my husband would come in and check my breathing and wake me up in the morning because I would have, I was bleeding so, so heavy and obviously not eating and, and, and just the worst shape. And I, after the bleeding stopped, I noticed just the hypervigilance got worse. My endometriosis symptoms got worse and no one would believe me. And no one really, instead of supporting me, it almost made me feel, uh, I could feel it. I called them pings. Every time someone wouldn't support me or they were saying the false things about me, I could physically feel it. And I, I just three years, I was living in a massive depression, PTSD symptoms and continuous hits, pings, I call them, um, from family and friends. And I couldn't find an answer. The doctor said, it's not from the IUD. It's not from the IUD. And I actually, on my good days, after some time, I would have good days, I started thrifting. And I found your book in the book section. And I brought it home and I read it and I got to the section on estrogen dominance and I went, whoa, wait a minute. And then I saw, do not use the, the you, I think you call it a coil, but the mm -hmm. IUD hormonal therapy. And I just knew, I knew my body was off. I, I was so out of character. I couldn't really, the anxiety levels were so high and, you know, maybe I acted a little crazy. I remember being in the shower and the face wash stinging my skin. And I started crying and shaking and Ryan came in and he just held me. And I said, what is, what is wrong? What is wrong? And then I actually didn't finish your book. And because I was in such a cognitive dissonance kind of state, just couldn't get what's wrong with my body. You know, something's wrong, but these doctors are telling you it's fine. It's not from the IUD. And, um, I signed up for your emails and by chance your email popped down that you had a free webinar. 
I joined it and I always say to Ryan, when you were explaining it, it all made sense. I had taken the insurance broker exam and after I'd studied it, just clicked, it made sense how to do it. And the same feeling came over me. And I said, Ryan, this is going to work. I, I just, I have had fragrant, uh, fragrant allergies, dust mite allergies, all this stuff since I was younger, but I was always told I was dramatic and sensitive and faking and looking for attention or using it as an excuse. And um, so the validation that that one webinar brought, I just knew and I struggled in the beginning, but I have to say right away, my body, I hadn't been eating right. I was, I had lost so much weight that I was drinking coffee and eating donuts and like just totally not taking care of myself because again, the state of mind, I, I would black out or if I was highly stressed or if someone attacked or my body would just get all worked up. So I was not paying attention. And then once I started your shakes, I said, I think it's rebuilding the muscles in my brain. Mm -hmm. And slowly my, the mind clarity that I began to get it was amazing. And, you know, I, I had to slowly get all the products because I've been out of work and um, my body loved the shakes and I'm not in bad. I had teeth problem and the shakes were a perfect, perfect way for me to get the nutrients in all the products my skin loved. Um, I mean, it, it, it did take a while for the hypervigilance, but every single thing that you suggested it, it worked. And, you know, people like, I like how you say woo woo. You think mm -hmm. like the guided meditation or the bilateral, like it wouldn't work, but it does work. And it is a lot of work. You have to go against what you've thought and felt about yourself. And I realized a lot of it was just other people's opinions of me. It, that's reputation doesn't define you. It's character. And I had made mistakes in my past, but I always knew I was in pain, but there was a point that I thought maybe I was faking. Maybe it, it is in my head. I had learned to live around the pain, but the biggest um, thing that I got was the emotional healing from the, it's 20 years this year with endometriosis. And I've been in remission for two months now. No, no pain. My ovaries throbbed 24 seven for 20 years and it's gone. And I was probably living in level seven pain. <laughs> and, <clears throat> and I remember one time dropping to the ground in pain and laughing. So Ryan wouldn't think I was faking. And another girl I saw, because a lot of women are now coming out on the internet with their stories. She said the same thing. I, I have to drop down to the ground in pain. When I was at my worst, I don't mean to, to go so quick, but there wasn't social media and there wasn't any information on it out. And the validation that your program brought alone, the scientific, the biological, the medical, the, I mean, I would run out every week, Ryan, remember when I said this happened? I remember when I felt this? And it was, it was a big, it, it helped seal a big crack in my heart from a lot, well, not allowing, but without the validation, I never spoke up or I didn't feel strong enough because like I said, I, I almost started to think maybe I was being dramatic. And mm. now, you know, at the end of your program, I have had a blast of women on social media sharing their stories. I mean, like, really, they, they show their surgeries and their everything. And it's, it's just, it's a totally different feeling without pain. It, it, I feel, I think I said to you, I, I was never a depressive person. I always had anxiety. I was always very sensitive since I was young, but um, it, it's, I feel like I'm in college, like what I, when I was in college, like just the natural energy and no pain, no throbbing. It, it, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, wow. What, I mean, what a story. And I know we've still got more to hear from you, but even just, and I know your story, but it's, it's so inspiring to hear after 20 years of pain, seven level pain, you know, that's, that's a long time to be suffering you know, and, and, and I think what's terribly sad and is, is 
endlessly a problem for women with endometriosis is they're fighting to be believed that no one around them really understands if anything and even the medical profession don't get it so not only do you have the physical pain but you have that emotional element too which is very poorly understood so what would you so so when you think back to kind of like when you joined the program what were you feeling what what was you said to ryan okay I, i've got a good feeling about this what what was it that you felt what gave you that good feeling to take that leap of faith because it is a leap of faith when you're coming into a program you know you've been let down by doctors you've been promised different things by different people what was it for you that made you think right this is going to work for me to to be honest the one on one with you when you took the time to talk to me and we had related about our childhood and our relationships and what i had been previously studying when i realized i'm a highly sensitive person, but doesn't make me weak. I was born with a sensitive body, eczema and all that stuff, but you took the time to listen and all the stuff that you were saying in the, the program, it just made sense because you don't understand what this disease does to you unless you have it. And the way you broke it down and then explaining toxic people, toxic products, the, it, my stomach used to bloat if I would eat restaurant food and people were like, you can't eat your stomach bloats. And I never really knew. And it was the wheat allergy and mm -hmm. anything processed would hurt. And once I start, I, I just, I just knew. And with the support that you gave me and the confirmation that you also experience endometriosis, the medications, I put trust into the doctors. I went on two rounds of birth control that did nothing but make me bleed the whole time and have acne. Um, Lupron did nothing but make me a fat blob <laughs> that went to bed at 6.30 every night and the pain didn't go away. And then, like I said, that the Mirena, I would say every month, I feel like I'm supposed to get a period. And I, my body, I could just feel it. And like I had lost not that I lost hope with doctors, but I had one great doctor, but they just wanted to give me medications. And then I get them and I'm called a drug addict and mm -hmm. a druggie or what I've heard. I was a heroin addict. I've heard I was a crackhead, um, all these kind of comments, but I just put my trust in doctors. And actually during the program, when I went to see a therapist, she's like, do you know that you were on like a crazy concoction of medication? I went, this is why I'm here and I put my trust in doctors. I don't want to do medicine anymore. And uh, she, she wasn't too happy about the holistic route. She wouldn't look at my blood results with my uh, progesterone level readings, but it, it's truly amazing because it is a lot of work. It is a lot of change And your book. I remember reading and going, yeah, right. Changing my laundry detergent and changing my soaps and my makeups and my, I can't eat um, avocados. I, I, I was the picky, <laughs> excuse me, the pickiest eater. And uh, it, it was just, honestly, it was the one-on-one -on -one with you that it was just someone listening, validating, and you're, you speak so well and intelligently and just having everything backed up, like I said, scientifically, medically, and even throughout the program, it was, I, every week it would just help all those thoughts I had over the years people don't think that they don't see you when you're lying in bed in a fetal position and it does a lot to your psych so maybe I was a little woo woo or crazy for a little bit but I knew it wasn't me I knew something was off and so since 20 I got I started symptoms at 19 at 25 I was diagnosed after a, lap a laparoscopy and then, so I did the four hormonal treatments and medications, not knowing it was making me sicker. And, yeah. and I did, I pushed myself a lot and maybe pushed myself too hard, you know, getting the broker license, but it was the best feeling in the world, even though I had to resign. But um, I, I had nobody, I went to five American doctors and they all basically made me feel crazy, which I already went through trying to find out what I had from 19 to 25. And it, it I, like I always say, I'm so grateful because mm -hmm. nobody else had ever made me feel so normal and validated. And yeah. I was in such a depressed, out of character state, like I said. 
And, you know, when you have everyone in your life leave you because they think that you're faking or you're being dramatic or ignoring them, that adds to it. And that's also, you know, when you, excuse me, you brought it up. I didn't really ever put the two together that it could cause physical harm. But then with your program, how it affects your nervous system and shrinks your blood vessels. And yes, I was a, an anxious, nervous, depressed mess. And I was it was by chance that I saw that email and joined that webinar. And, you know, I've had a lot of things just happen, blessings and stuff since I've started the program and really focused. When I, at the beginning, heard self-care, I was almost programmed to think that was selfish. Yeah. But with endometriosis, it's a necessity. It's not selfish. It's where we're not different as women. We are all the same, but our bodies are different. It doesn't make us less of a person. Like I always say, if women get diagnosed young and use your program right from the start, they would avoid the 20 years of yeah. all the mental and physical stuff and not lose out on being a mother, you know, all those things. Um, truly, I, I always say biggest blessing being able to do your program. And it wasn't easy. And I know mm -hmm. you were you guys were so patient with me and it is a great feeling. You know, I, I, you said something recently, be proud of yourself. And I think back to those days alone after the IUD and so much pain and depression and having people calling me delusional and crazy and self-loathing. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I, I don't, I, but I didn't have validation. I didn't have an answer. Yeah. And I was always very passive and I, uh, and, you know, I guess people pleasing is what they said, but I was just really nice and, and friendly. And I made personal mistakes in my past that I've learned from. But like I said, my character I know is good at heart, but I had to learn through some mistakes. But now I look forward to the future. You had said, you know, your, your birthday just came up and you wouldn't take anything back. Same with me, because I would have never gotten out of the thinking I could let people treat me like I'm a child or that I'm a disappointment I was called you know you hear these things and it sticks in your subconscious and that's also what your program helped with the you know the subconscious nodules and I, it just it it's so validating it's healing in itself but then when the mind clarity came and the more I took the shakes and the vitamins and the pain eases. I mean, it's unexplainable. Like I said, I, I don't remember the last time I felt this good. I play soccer with my dog every night. <laughs> and, you know, I've gotten into to new hobbies and new, new friends. And it's one little thing at a time. I still have work to go, but truly, truly a blessing. And um, I originally thought, oh, when I do my podcast, I'm going to talk about what everybody did to me, but that's the past. And if it hadn't happened and I didn't finally say, I got to just step back. And like I said, I mean, Ryan, I go, Ryan, listen, <laughs> quiet, <laughs> no throbbing ovaries. So it, 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 it truly, truly has saved my life. And you know, the risk of breast cancer is in my family but when I got my blood work back, which my doctor did, he threw the piece of paper back at me when I asked him to test for those uh, hormones. He did it anyways. And when it came back and I saw negative 40, but it was in American and in your book, I think you had it in a different like conversion. And I said to you, when you diagnosed me in two weeks, okay, for four years, I had doctors telling me it was nothing wrong. And then I said, negative 40, that, that seems really low. Should I be scared? And you were so kind. You, I go, you go, well, I've seen lower. <laughs> like you were just always so gentle and you never were telling us what to do like we were children or reprimanding us. It was always just so gentle and because you've been through it. And um, just, I, I always wanted to share my story because who I was, I even two months ago was totally different because you can do so much more now without the pain and the mental uh, overthinking and ruminating and caring what people think. You just want to get healthy. I think it's pretty, 
uh, normal to ask that. I don't want to get cancer. I, I, I want to get healthy and everything is healable except your teeth and food is your medicine is hung up on my walls right behind me. <laughs> and um, true, I, I have to keep saying it, my body, all the products, you know, I, I had a fragrance allergy, a dust mite allergy, which I still struggle with the dust mite allergy, but um, my skin instantly when I use the fragrant free shampoo. And then I realized that's why I would scream cry in the shower when I was using the face wash right in the beginning because it would sting because it had xenoestrogen galore in it. And I never thought I would be able to memorize. Now I look at ingredients and it's like, Oh, Nope, there's more than six things. I'm not even <laughs> going to keep looking at it. Um, and for people that are concerned that it's a lot of work, once you get it down, it becomes normal. You can't even imagine going back. Uh -huh. But, but you say it's a lot of work, but, but the thing is you, you, been through so much for 20 years and you needed to put that effort into you for the first time ever to get these amazing results back because your estrogen levels were very very high you were very estrogen dominant you know and, and estrogen for those who don't know is one of the many hormones in the body but normally women with endometriosis tend to not all the time but tend to have very high levels of estrogen and their progesterone levels tend to be very low and that estrogen is just like fire in the body just causing more inflammation <coughs> more adhesions and cysts and and that, all that acidic type pain so you had it very badly but i think it is hard work because it's hard work to, to think of yourself it, that's it, and, and i think for women we are a lot of us and i'm being i'm generalizing here tend to be brought up to be seen to be seen and not heard and to be good girls and to sit quietly and look pretty and and to shut up basically and yes and actually to put other people ahead of ourselves so the idea of taking care of ourselves that's the hard work but i remember you emailing me quite early on and going I, my body is loving these shakes. I'm absolutely, can I, can I have more? My body is loving these juices. My <laughs> body, and you were like, my body is loving this. My body's loving that. So quite early on, I mean, it is a mindset shift, isn't it? Because we're, we're conditioned that we're selfish to take care of ourselves. But as you wonderfully said at the beginning, it's essential for women with endometriosis to really put self-care to the front, forefront. And that's where the challenge is. That's the difficulty because that's, well, that's what you've been trained not to do. Yeah. See, that's exactly, that's what I mean. It, it's hard because you're breaking your programming and how you were so used to allowing people to treat you or like I said, putting trust in doctors and changing the lifestyle, but mentally is, is for, for me at least was hard. You know, I, I, my body just sometimes wanted to just fight, you know, I, the depression. I, like I said, I was never really depressed before in my life. And so when I say it was hard, it's not hard ordering and, and doing the stuff. It, it was just, it's a, it's a different mindset that you have to learn and, and, you'll almost battle inside your head, like, to, you know, wake up and journal and do the guided meditation. Like I said, I, not to hurt you. I remember yeah, I, guided meditation. I always thought it was like you said, sitting in the woods going, mm, <laughs> and the bilateral music for sleep. I, I mean, it, it, it's amazing, it, but it's, it's dedication. And, and I didn't realize till the end, you know, I, I did, I, I worked really hard because, I, I knew, I mean, I knew you, you look at you, 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 you're, you're glowing and you, you look great and you're, you're doing things you never imagined. And I have all these new ideas and business ideas because when the pain subsides, like I said, the mind clarity. So I guess that's what it was because I kept struggling with my old ways of thinking and switching, but the way you, you just gently guide and the way you, you know, you repeat things the perfect way so it's always so it's not too much to take in but it's always reminded you know step by step and it's just perfect because you know you went through it like I said and and then my body was in desperate need of nutrition and I was using every product that was probably worse I used to smoke cigarettes I stopped smoking cigarettes I used Excedrin for every migraine no Excedrin anymore no headaches anymore um, I never thought, no medication. I mean, I never, I remember saying to you, Wendy, I've been on certain medications for so long, like, and 
how am I going to get off? And you said, your mind will guide you. And I remember after being on the supplements, it almost was as if it started to block when I, you know, I wanted to wean off correctly because some of them can cause side effects and it almost like it blocked it because I didn't need it as, and it just didn't do anything it, with the, I don't know which supplement, but I, I, it was the one thing from the start with the shakes and the vitamins, no matter what. I think one day I missed the shake, but still to this day, and I remember asking you, am I like becoming addicted to the shakes? Is that bad <laughs> that my body wants it? But I, and I, but, but that's have, it. When, when you've had so long, and, and this is very commonplace for women you know, who are listening to this, you've got endometriosis, we're not talking a couple of days or a couple of weeks or a couple of months or even a couple of years. Invariably it's decades of time where you've had that endless, you know, medication or surgery or painkillers or drugs, which again are, are designed to manage symptoms, but not to get to the root causes. So you become undernourished, you become weak, you become depressed you, because your, your body's in so much pain or so much inflammation. And, and then, but you know, and so it's no wonder, you know, you were on all these things, but what was fantastic was you were learning how to listen to yourself. Yes. You were listening to you. And, and this is, this is the beautiful part of a woman with endometriosis coming onto this journey is really learning how to take back power and control. I say that a lot, but even just hearing you talk, you know, now your body better than anyone. You have that confidence now that no matter who it is, I don't care what their profession is or w how far up they are on whatever, you know, yes. they don't know your body like you know your body. But what was scary before was your body was just like in fire and had all these symptoms, but you had no one there just to guide you as to kind of like, well, what these symptoms might mean and what do you think, how are you interpreting them? And, you know, learning to read the signs of your own body. And have confidence in that. So you've you've been fantastic. You've been a great student at, at you know taking the information because it's all about for me. It's information, education, and inspiration. You know, and obviously implementation as well. And you were brilliant to all four of these things. You Thank know, you. Being yourself. You know, you were you turned up even when you weren't feeling like doing it. You did the shakes when you weren't feeling it on a bad day. You know, and that's what is amounts to the success that you've had and um, and that's why i say you need to be proud of yourself because you have come so far and i i'm thinking of asking women to, to privately do their own video when they start you know so that they can even just go back and be so proud of themselves you know because again self-pride uh, self-care it's almost like that's been projected as if there's some kind of shame you know for having those feelings but women with endometriosis have invariably suffered insurmountable amounts of pain for so long they deserve it so what do you think if someone's listening to this and they're saying yeah but but julie i'm in a really bad way and i've had all the surgeries my doctor's saying i should have more surgery what, what would you be saying to these women personally all of the treatments the doctors did made me sicker made me in more pain um i i, I don't want to put doctors down but even in my world of people, friends and family, they do not know how serious endometriosis is. And like I said, the doctor that put the IUD in, he didn't even take the time to speak to me before. And I remember going, but I want to talk to him. And then after the surgery, I said, I want to talk to him. I had another laparoscopy. And, and after that, I said, I will never have another surgery. I'm just going to live with this pain. Because I knew, like I said, the birth control every month, I, the second time I did it for six months, and every month I was bleeding every day. And I would say, he said, try one more month. Just give it one more month. And I actually just, I don't like to, I think you said the endometriosis support groups are great, but you read the stories and a woman was, uh, she got pregnant with twins. She um, then, uh, her endometriosis came back. She had a hysterectomy. They put her on hormonal therapy. She got breast cancer. Um, she had to get both of her breasts removed. She has five to seven years to live with two-year-old twins. Mm -hmm. And I started bawling my eyes out reading it. And the hormonal therapy is what they are telling women to do. And, you know, I know a lot of the younger women that I, I've actually befriended a, a bunch and we talk on the phone and I don't try to push, you know, like say they're wrong, but there's the other surgery, the excision back when I had it, that wasn't mm -hmm. out yet. Like I said, nothing was out when I was at my late 20s. 
And I, I know the all natural route might scare people away, but once you, like I said, once you start feeling it, it it's just eye opening. But, but it's and interesting, validating. isn't it? It's interesting the natural route because nature, the laws of nature are all around us all the time. You just need to look at a tree going through the different seasons. You just need to look at a cut on your finger healing. The laws of nature are there. Natural is, natural has been made to sound woo woo. There's that, there's that phrase again, but that has been made to, find, to sound that an alternative. I don't even like the word alternative because you know, what your body does is always regenerating and it's always repairing whether or not we consciously, well, we can't consciously make that happen. And it's, it's frustrating, isn't it? Because you're right. I know the whole idea of natural is kind of like, oh, it's something weird and wonderful. No, what you're doing is if you remove what is toxic and you swap out what is you know, causing poison and pain, your body will just do what it does. There's nothing like weird and magical and uh, you're around a witch's pot. New age. You know, it's not yeah. like frogs' tails and stuff going in. You know, it's nothing <laughs> like that. It's, it's, it's basic common sense. It's physiological, biological, um, you know, science here. This is what your body does. You cut your finger, it heals. You fall and graze your knee, it heals. You stick your finger in the fire, try not to do that. The burn will heal. You know, so the, this is what your body's always doing. And I think that for me was pivotal for me on my journey to recognize it wasn't just something weird and out with my, my realm of, of tangibility. And I think you get that now too. You really get that whatever happens inside your body. And I was talking earlier about how I, 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 my, my, my son very kindly brought the flu home and I, and I thought I was getting it, but I know enough about my body and enough education about different things. And I've read enough studies and I've you know, read, that's why I love all these books, constantly educating myself. So I can like constantly look after my body in, without medication, without drugs. Now, obviously there is a time and a place for drugs and surgery. I'm not saying that there isn't, but for women with endometriosis, if these things have not worked already, then you need to be looking for a different path. Like you say, if you were 19 or 23 and had gone on the natural route, you would have saved yourself 20 <sighs> pain and suffering. And, and fertility. And, and, but I also want to say that the emotional aspect and the environment and the people you are around, I never would have linked it to yeah. my pain. And I don't mean to keep bringing it up, but I, you know, like I said, the mental shift of knowing like, putting myself first isn't being selfish. And I always like to be giving and caring and stuff like that. But I had a lot of people's true colors come out, but at the same time, like I know it, it does seem like maybe I was having a mental breakdown because I didn't have an answer. I was blacking out, but just to know being around people that are not supportive or not, you know, not, good intentioned or, or pretend to be one way in front of you, but the behind it, it takes a toll on your body just the same as mm. medication. And, and I, I, for me, I realized a lot of my pain wasn't in my, it was emotional because everything's connected when you went over the limbic system and, you know, Dr. Lipton, the video, like how every time it's constricts your blood vessels, I said, gee, cause I must <laughs> constricted them and you know I'm just I'm about to be 39 years old and and like I said I'm so excited to just to see what and I'm excited for you and your program because like I said if, if women get diagnosed and they accept that they have this different body if they just started right away that they would prevent so much more damage emotional distress yeah. maybe even being um drawn to toxic people because maybe you know the their body or their environment or their childhood had got them thinking or unconsciously programmed to be around people that don't validate you that yeah. that make you feel uh that you know you're supposed to work for them or that you're a joke because you have this disease that when you go out in public yeah we look okay because we want to look presentable yeah. but you don't see us run you know in the bathroom on the floor or, you know, screaming, crying in pain because we carry ourselves and we enjoy the good days. But when you, once you get that pain gone, it's completely, that's the shift. And I, I still get mind shifts of just changing my old ways of thinking. And 
I guess where I also said it was hard, I had to, I was in three years of such depression and getting out of some toxic relationships that yeah. I had to keep, I have fa- even just washing my face twice a day with the new products. And I was always remembering to order with iHerb probably loves me, iHerb.com, but <laughs> it almost made me start to have a schedule again and to start living a routine slowly. But, you know, like I said, it's slow as fast, but I have all these new goals. I've had blessings happen, you know, with Ryan and I throughout the program and it's, it, it, it truly makes you realize your worth as a human being and that this disease does not define you. It maybe makes you a little different inside, like your insides and it makes you sensitive, but what's so bad about being sensitive? We, we care and we love to love, but we just got to be careful what we take in, what we're around, just like you've taught us, you know? Absolutely. And that sensitivity, I think, is something, sadly, a lot of women um, get, get, oh, you're just too sensitive and things. Yes, we are. That doesn't make us weak. We're incredibly strong women because there are not many people that could endure two decades of pain and suffering to those degrees. You know, so if you think of the strength that women with endometriosis have, it's, you know, there's, there's different elements, as you've already said, that you need to be looked at. And I think anyone that says, one tablet, one herb, one pill, one drug, one surgery is going to cure your endometriosis. You need to be wary of that person because it's a multimodal approach. You have to look at the whole person, whole thing. And as you know, I talk about the five P's, the five poisons, produce, products, property, and people. And there's so many different things that can affect a sensitive woman's body. And it's a highly sensitive body, which therefore is more susceptible and reactive to its environment. That doesn't make it a weak body. It just makes it very, very perceptive. You know, a lot of empathy, a lot of compassion, yeah. a lot of sensitivity. And, and that can sometimes be taken in. And that's what's been incredible with you and your journey is you learning about your boundaries, learning about your worth learning about, you know, what is possible for you now, you know, in your own way, in your own light. And also how I was at one point, not, well, I guess obsessing over all the comments said to me so negative and nasty and people turning their back and making up stories. And then finally it just clicked like, it's my body. I know what I've been through just because I'm not going around speak, standing up for myself because I, I think I told you in the beginning, I'm just going to isolate because then the one time I did reach out, the friend ended up twisting it and stuff. But you know, this is, it's not a coincidence that my body healed once I took a, a step back and I will love from afar. I, you know, it's, it's not, I, I took all the guilt and shame and I have lived with my whole life. And that is also something that I wanted to share that to be able to cure, I don't know if it is codependency, but that was one of the biggest things too. It came to me one night that it was almost like my brain was addicted to thinking about all the negative that I had taken in all the comments when I, because I didn't have validation. I had no doctor that said you really are suffering. Or if I missed work and I had a boss that would basically punish me and double my work. Like it was my whole life. And if there was ventilation in a building, my nose always gets stuffy. I have post-nasal drip and a severe dust mite allergy. And people would look at me funny like I was on drugs. And I remember always, just always being self-conscious, always, and it's gone. <laughs> it's, just, it's just now, I, I, like I said, I, when you realize the seriousness, the validation, and that there's so many of us out there I mean, the the splurge on social media, I don't mean to keep bringing it up, but, and they're all sweethearts. Most all of them are the sweetest, uh, empathetic, and they're in so much pain and, and they, they're so relying. I can't, uh, my surgery's coming up. My sur- I, and, you know, I'm not one to say don't do it, but I, I, I do, I tr- try to promote, not, I, I, not that overly promote, but it, it's life changing. And especially women that have gone through it like a, 20 years this year. And um, it, when you live with your ovaries throbbing every day, just that alone, I, it causes insomnia. It, you know, and then when the, the levels would go up, oh, I can't go out. And you just lie in bed alone 
So what do you think the woman's mind is going to? And there's no support, no one helping, except my poor husband. You know, it, it, it was a life lesson, this IUD nightmare. I had a boss say, I don't want to hear one more thing about that IUD. And I just remember I, I, had, I ended up resigning because I just, my body, I had thrush. I had, like I said, the cystic acne, my hair falling out. And I just now know I can logically, like you said, no matter who a doc, well, whoever, whatever status they are, whatever they think, is fine, but I know now, and it's the va- it's it's just all the validation and all that you've taught me about my body, and you've broken it down to every organ, to every, and when I have never thought about it in the way that when you have anxiety, that's causing just as much pain as if you were to get hit with a bat. You know, it it or it's all connected, and um, and, and yes. it's not your fault. You know that. No. That's just the way that it's been. It's just been the way that, that things have worked out. But at the same time, whilst it wasn't your fault, you now are in control. You now have the power to to work with your body and understand it. So if anyone's listening to this and they're thinking, yeah, well, it's worked for you, Julie, but it's not going to work for me. What would you be saying to them? If you have that outlook, then maybe it's not going to work. But I was... This, I was the same way. I, like before at the webinar, like it's not going to work. I like changing my lot. Like I said, all the changes and there is never going to be one pill that can cure all that this disease does. Yes. So when you see all the different aspects that you have to change in your life and that you teach us and the best of the best supplements and, and then you can't, get it in a surgery or a pill. And I think, honestly, this is the only route to healing. It's not a cure, because that's what the girl was trying to argue with me. And it's something you have to accept and, and do for the rest of your life. But you feel so good that it just becomes normal. And I don't, every doctor experience I had, they made me feel crazy. They made, and then it just added to everyone else thinking, yeah. I was dramatic and, and thinking they had the right to tell me, you're not sick, you're fine. Mm. Go for a jog, it's in your head. You know, you're a disappointment. Just all these comments. And if you want to go the doctor route, it's just going to, it's in circles. Like you said, it's just a, a going in circles. And I had no clue. I mean, I think back, why did I put my body into menopause at 26 years old? And like I, I joke, I was a fat blob because all I did was gain weight and I was in bed at 630 and, and I had all, to drive. All you, were, all you were doing was taking advice from someone who, who you thought was going to help you. And again, I, I don't bash doctors because doctors are just a byproduct of their training, which is set up by governments and big pharma. So that is just the way that it is. And that's all that they know. But, for, you know, again, you know, you understand that the whole essence of the programs is to educate you so much so you know your body better than any single living person on this planet. And that you can not only learn, as you said, it's not a cure, because if you reverted back to your old ways, then the symptoms would come back. But now that you know how to dampen down that fire, to reduce, rebalance the hormones, the estrogen, you know, what to put in to nourish your body, to help it do what it always wants to do, which is to heal itself. The condition has dampened down and gone into remission, which is just insane, which is just fantastic. And I do want to take the time again to say, I remember what you were like. What? Uh, how long ago was that? Seven months ago? Six, seven yes. months ago? And look how far you've come. I hope I you really do feel proud of yourself. Because Thank you. Because it's a very difficult thing to share with, with the listeners you know, of just how significant this is, this interview is for you because you had been so beaten down by those toxic people around you and the, the medical profession who had, you know, abused you, that you felt so little of yourself. You know, you were shy in speaking up and being seen and heard. And I know that's emotional for you, but I think it's really important to share. But oddly, I'm really not shy. Right? I would always say to you and Christina, yeah. like, as sensitive as I am, because that's what I was saying, I knew my inner self was I wasn't I was acting out of character but I wasn't borderline which I heard people were calling me or whatever it was or having a mental breakdown or smoking crack I mean I it was it was a, a, a hormone imbalance and like I said if 
what are the chances that once I did your program, it, I got back to, I never, ever dreamed that I would feel this way and have a voice. And it's not going to be where before, you know, some family members said I was screaming at them when I first got sick, but I was standing up for myself. I was angry. They were telling me I wasn't sick. Yeah. Now I, all my anger is gone. Um, all cause I val like you keep, I keep saying you validate it and you, you see that you have to do this, but it doesn't make you different. It doesn't make you weaker. And no. to have my sense of humor back, cracking jokes and smiling and dancing and singing with my dog, like seven months ago, I was, you know, all alone, uh, crying, thinking I, I was going to get cancer. And I, I had just had biopsies and nobody called to see if they were negative. And now I'm all about just taking care of myself. And the, I have a good small circle of very loyal friends and, and Ryan and all that. He, you know, I, I have to just give him credit because I saw a video on YouTube that the partners of women with endometriosis, and I'm not perfect, and we've had our ups and downs, and he stepped up and he took care of me, and it's made our marriage better. We are actually more in love now. We communicate. We've both grown. Like my, it's amazing how much my marriage has got better, and he's changed a little too because he's he, he likes spoke. the pepper shakes as well now, doesn't he? <laughs> he does. And he, he started some vitamins, but he even stood up to someone for me and said, it's changed Julie's life. And he doesn't really, he's very quiet. He's complete opposite of me because I'm Ramble McGee. But he said, and he hadn't said that to me yet because he's watched me go from depressed and crying and hypervigilance and shaking. And why did this person say this? And why doesn't anyone care? And what is going on? And to seeing me start dancing and singing when I come out and it, it's almost helped him. It's just been wonderful. It, it, it's it's life-changing and anyone that's a, afraid or thinks it doesn't work. I was the most sensitive. I was, like I said, I tried every, everything. I, I had a, I got addicted to Percocets in my twenties and I got off of them uh, at 28 and I, I, then I thought marijuana and, and everything I was doing was just, making me sicker and it's like I said no coincidence that now that I've taken even the Excedrin everything out which I never thought I would be Excedrin I always had to have on me it's it's it, it's a lot of money saved so it balances out you know having to order the supplements but I I do I enjoy because <laughs> it makes you feel like you're you know you really are taking care of yourself and again where I was so depressed it's starting a routine and, and I am committing to something and it's just slowly, you know, and now I've made slowly making commitments with plans with friends and I do my self dates, which are very <laughs> fun. <laughs> and, uh, it, it, I, there's nothing to be scared of. And, and I, I know it works. I, I, it, I, I, it worked for me and, and very quickly my, my body was just very deprived of, of emotional support and, and the, Nutri nutrients and you I have to say Wendy you glow and you're so kind and you're so you say it just well spoken and it couldn't you couldn't be a better teacher because you've been there and you understand and that also you were like a maternal guidance that I needed oh, and but yeah, I have to be my own parent crying in a minute <laughs> <laughs> but, oh. uh, yeah well, look, you've been an absolute joy to have as a student. Thank you. It's amazing to be with you on this journey because it is a journey and you know you've got to keep on this path and you've got to keep doing what you're doing because you can't stop now. You've come too far. Yes. No, there's no going back. No going back. And I hope that you will continue to keep you number one because yes. the world needs a healthy you. But Lou, thank you so much for taking the thank time you. to share your story. It's a really thank inspiring you. story. And I know that you're going to be writing some of your story down for my book that's going to be coming out my yes. success stories as well because again I just you know it's so important to share these success stories to give women hope and let them know that there is another way and there's no side effects to going naturally you know that's the progesterone cream that yeah. is I remember when I had the breakthrough bleeding and yeah. it just made it I'm like oh this is magic but it's all natural <laughs> it's all natural well look yes thank you so much for coming on and for those thank you Wendy listening um, if you haven't already um, got any information, there's loads of free information. You can download your top 
five jumpstart tips at healendometriosisnaturally.com. You can get a free paperback book worth $14.99, just pay shipping and handling worth $14.99 as I say, but it's um, go to healendometriosisnaturallybook.com. And we've also recently started a 21 day challenge. So if you want to put your pinky toe in the water and get a sense of what it's like to be part of this amazing group of women in this expanding community of people who are now calling themselves endo bosses, then you can go to uh, endoboss.com forward slash challenge and, and join us there. But Julie, thank you so much. Indeed. Thank you, Wendy. Much love. Okay. Thank Take you. Care.